Despite what their moms told them, they just aren't talented enough for radio. Unfortunately, anyone can have a show these days. Sean. Well, I'm pretty hard to figure out sometimes. I can't even figure myself out sometimes, so don't you try to. Joe. You're an idiot and really a disloyal person. This is the Cuse Militia. Those two unapologetically biased, orange-blooded homers, Sean and Joe. It's the most bullshit thing I've seen in 30 years. Welcome, orange men and ladies. Happy Sunday. This is the Cuse Militia with Sean and Joe. At Cuse Militia on the socials, go there, join the militia. We are back. Not to report the news, but to talk about it. It's been a few weeks. And um, spring game is done. There's been some... Some portal info on uh, in football, and um, I mean, geez, it dates back to before Edwards entered. I think the last time we talked, Jesse Edwards, we were pretty confident he was coming back, right? <sighs> so, well, so <laughs> I mean, hey, look, I even, I said it too. I mean, I even said there that I hope I wasn't getting my hopes up. And to be perfectly honest with you, from what I heard. Uh, in in how things went down, like I don't think that Debo was wrong at the time when he when he said it. No. I think that there were some things that happened after the fact with you know the fact that other teams could get him other you know more money. There was a little birdie in someone's ear, and uh, I think that's what happened there. Well, so you know we'll um, let's we'll talk basketball real quick, and then we'll get into a little bit of football stuff. And the football stuff is still there's still I mean there's still like. It's still real, like, vague to me, in, even yeah, after the spring yeah. game and all that stuff. Uh, so Edwards ended up transferring to West Virginia, okay? And mm-hmm. I'm just glad, for one, that he's not going to be in the ACC. Uh, that's the first thing. The second thing is, on a side note, Joe Girard's down to two teams. We did mention Joe when we were here last time. He's got it narrowed, yeah. narrowed down to LSU or Clemson. He's going to be a tiger one way or another. Yeah, well, that's true. That's true. Um, yeah, and the, the funny thing is is that when we talked about that too, right, we talked about the two ACC teams, two or three ACC teams that were, you know, when we were talking, yeah, don't want them to go to Pittsburgh because we play them twice. Well, guess what? We play Clemson twice next year too. So um, really hoping for um, really hoping for an LSU pick here. Yeah, I mean – Obviously, you look good in yellow, Joe. I don't want any of our former team to be on any anywhere in the ACC. I just I hate that. I hate the the oh, feeling, the, the way that he can shoot. Yeah, so you never know. Um, uh, back to Edwards, though. The, I mean, the main thing here about Edwards is not only was it a big surprise, but it was kind of what he said. And in so many words, he basically said Syracuse is just not into the NIL thing. Um, his exact quote was, I mostly wanted a fresh start and a new challenge. NIL isn't what I'm playing for, which, I mean, they're all playing for NIL. I didn't really want to get into this, but it doesn't seem that Syracuse as an organization is that into that. Um, so, I mean, enough said. Um, he said, he goes on to say, I'm not really sure what their plan is or what the school's idea is behind it. For me, it was something that they couldn't offer in that way. So (laughs) this was on the heels of, by the way, this was on the heels of Adam Weitzman basically saying that he's pulling out of the NIL and that's a whole nother conversation. So we can hit up that here. Um, you know, no, but that comment could be directly from that action, right? Well, it could be. I think that came out first, obviously, right? And then uh, I think it was... No, the Weitzman thing came out first. Are you sure? Because I remember... The Weitzman thing came out the same day that Jesse committed to West Virginia. Okay. All right. And then and then, and then inst- Jesse's his words or his interview on ESPN, I think, was like a day or two later. Uh, the first <laughs> report I saw on it was from inside the Loud House, to be fair. And they had, um, they had been the ones first, I think, that reached out to Weitzman. I think it was mm-hmm. it was uh, Neil Adler from Inside the Lot House, and then there was um, an article written up on that. And so, anyways, but to so here's the thing: you you've got an, uh, one of the most important people on the roster was was Jesse Edwards. In four, and this sparked a lot of outrage, and rightfully so, with you know Syracuse fans and. 
Um, you know, I was pissed. I think, look, the, 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 I don't have any idea what Syracuse is doing as an organization when it, when it comes to the athletic department. And I know the chancellor is, is supposedly, you know, the one waving the wand, but at some point, I mean, if he's just going to call the shots, what the hell is John Wildhack doing? And I mean, I think there's enough blame to go around, but obviously it starts with the, the chancellor and, you know, to not play the game, but they had already, this was a, like maybe a year ago or a year or two ago. Remember when we talked about them, uh, John Wildhack made a comment in, about, you know, well, we're going to be basically tiptoeing around the NIL. And we said, well, if you don't play th- the game and get down the mud with everybody, you're going to be left in the dust. And I don't know what, what sparked the whole thing with Weitzman or what kind of, kind of conversations Jesse Edwards has had with, with any of the L- NIL stuff, but you know, they get, they get JJ. Okay. There's gotta be something going on there. It's just, it's the whole thing. So confusing to me because I, I feel like if they would have, would have made some kind of deal with Jesse, or maybe there was one in the works with Weitzman and something happened, but you would think that they would make that happen, that they wouldn't just throw their arms up and be like, okay, yeah, we're not going to be, we're not going to be signing Jesse back because it's not worth it. Right. So, yep. I mean, <laughs> so it, it, the whole thing's confusing. I think it's dysfunctional. Uh, if Syracuse wants to remain above the fray and act like they're, you know, they're not going to get into this NIL stuff and maybe they are, maybe they aren't, but um, either way, um, it's going to hurt them in the long run. And I think they will. And I mean, there's collectives out there that no one knows the names of. I think there's an NIL player store, right? That yep. that has been set up so you can go support the NIL uh, funds through that. And yep. which I think is a great idea. Like, I think that's fantastic. I mean, that's, that's kind of how I pictured the whole thing to be going anyway. Um, and obviously right. it's way beyond what I thought. I guess that was me being naive about the whole thing. Yeah. I mean, look, there's, there's some colleges out there that have alumni. I mean, look, West Virginia, um, I, I know a couple of buddies, uh, softball team. I work with a guy, West Virginia fan, one of the top alumni that's given out money. He's a billionaire. I mean, I, how do you, I mean, you can't compete with that, right? So, um, there's always a, the question as well, too, right? Like, we knew that there's always been things going on, right? And, you know, when Syracuse just tried to get through just a couple things, not even really get down in the mud, um, they got caught up with sanctions less than 10 years ago, right? So, you never know if it's a situation where it's like, yeah, at some point, the NCAA is going to make rules against this and start going after because people are just it's it's the wild wild west people are out there you can get in your a parent's ear and next thing you know you know you're transferring didn't even think you were and you're making double what you would have got from syracuse right so um i don't know if that's that and we did start uh start late but i do know that there's a lot of people and it's it's public information this this university makes a lot of money and you know, to still sit here and use donor money and some of this other stuff to build facilities. Yes, you need to build facilities, but I think it's time, you know, if you want to do it as legal as possible and everything like that and not get it in with certain, you know, individuals or you think that it, there's going to be certain things that might come back to bite you, you got to leave your don- – and donors got to step and do the same thing. But the school needs to step up and spend their money for facilities, spend their money for that stuff, and leave the donor money for NIL so that we can maximize our p- potential here in the collectives. Because, um, you know, they're going to have to tweak some stuff because what they're doing just isn't isn't working. Yeah, I mean, what they're doing is not working. I don't know what happened, you know, with some of the add-ons with Starling being one. And, you know, Syracuse just picked up a former, um, a former recruit that we had on the board a couple years ago and Chance Westry. And look, <coughs> both of those guys are going to be great additions. And, you know, when, you know, not knowing really what's going on with Mintz, it kind of puts us in a position where, you know, if Mintz doesn't come back, it's not the end of the world, right? But we still have a glaring hole at center. I mean, in my opinion, you got, you got Hema and you got um, Kerry, right? So... <laughs> Uh, we then Patterson coming in, but yeah, well, we didn't see true, but we didn't see Carrie hard uh, at all last year, right? 
and, right. and we know Hema, it's, you know, he's got potential, but he's not there. He's not, he's not a Jesse Edwards. I mean, what Jesse Edwards did last year, um, down low, you know, he averaged a double, double for the season and, um, he was just off the charts and why you don't fight to keep a Jesse Edwards on your roster is beyond me, but this is how it's going to be, uh, from here on out. And like you said, if they don't start figuring it out, they're going to be left behind. So I guess there was some things with the, you know, him being um, a citizen of another country and being here and making some kind of money. I guess there's some kind of... Yeah, but we worked that out. We worked that out for West Virginia. Okay. (laughs) Exactly. Uh, That that type of stuff should have been figured out already. And it just makes you think that there's just a, a couple of boobs just befuddled on what to do. Like they have no idea. And I don't really have an answer for it. And I don't want to sit here and um, act like I, yeah. I, I know what the hell I'm talking about when it comes to what you need to do to keep guys. But it seems fairly simple that money talks and, you know, I don't know what Westry and what Starling have coming into this as far as the NIL deals. But I know that if it was, if it was, if the money was right, then Jesse would have stayed. Now, so Weitzman, yeah. Weitzman, you know, so if you want to be, for me, the Weitzman thing, like he's a kind of a flashy guy. I mean, he seems nice enough, right? From what we see or from what I see. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. Um, but he's kind of a flashy guy. He's bringing the, he's bringing the people to games. And I, I was never, I've said it on the show. I'm, I was never a fan of just bringing people to the games because it, every single time it took away from the game. You got the boobs over at Syracuse.com. Well, one, really. One really, who who who's still talking about Jimmy Fallon to this day, and um, you know it's just there was articles written about who he's bringing to the like who cares it just ta- it's, it takes away from right the game to me and I I never liked that and but you know what when you got a guy that's digging in his own pockets and he's doing nil stuff for the school that we root for I mean. <laughs> You know, okay, there's a little bit of a compromise there. Like, what's the big deal, right? So he's basically, (laughs) he was basically told, I guess, that um, the chancellor didn't want him doing any any more NAL. Um, And with the attention it was bringing, um, you know, his lawyer had made some comments on Twitter that, you know, everything was above the board and, and was done, you know, completely fair and legal. And uh, it's just kind of like a head scratcher to me, like why you would push away, you know, potential millions of dollars for a guy who already said he was going to pay seven figure salaries for a for a five star recruit for basketball and a five star recruit for football. Why why you would just wipe that off the board? And then not only that, but then when you're contacted by local media, not even have a comment. That being the the school or representatives of the athletic department or whatever it may be, no comment. Everything's there's just they've never cleared the air on any of it. Um, and don't you think that the fans at least or or even the players, which they might know, but the fans needs deserve some kind of like answer or like um, maybe not answer, it's, but like a reasoning, like why we're we doing this and this is what we're going to go doing forward. I mean, it just doesn't. Mm-hmm. It's a head scratcher. Yeah, um, it's increasingly, and it's it's really it's happened from the last couple of years and especially recently. Um, not bleed orange. I love. Syracuse grew up and everything, but just that whole the whole leadership of that whole school it's always and university like is making it more difficult to want to root for this team every single day. And to be perfectly honest with you, you know Adam Weitzman, he's blue collar. Um, I'm not going to allude on you know what his politics are or anything like that. You could have had a conversation about. Um, him not bringing celebrities to the game and sitting, you know, and bringing celebrities to the, to, you know, front <laughs> seats of the, you know, four seats and still used his NIL money. Um, they never once had a conversation with him. So to me, this just comes across as, is more of um, an uppity judgment, uh, more of a, I'm a white collar, I'm better than you. And, and I might be completely wrong, but you should be able to have conversations. And if there's conversations and if there's, um, you know, 
different thought processes. You guys were on the same page and you want to just go your other way, then that's fine. But to me, um, with the fact that Weitzman's blue collar, a little flashy, like you said, and also has a past, a little bit of a past. Where yeah, but it's not ter- are, it's not terrible, though. It's not terrible, but those those people that think they're better than other people are very, very judgmental. And the fact that they made this decision without even having a conversation with him, um, yeah, it's it's super, super annoying, especially considering that it's like, like you'd rather not, right? You'd rather not deal with this person over here for whatever reason, without even talking to him, without even knowing him, um, instead of helping, you know, your fan base and your school and, and your team, you know? I mean, they could be taking away money that, that our school gets by winning, by bringing in talent. And they're taking that all away because of most likely a personal decision. Which is makes sense. And that's all because, speculation, but I don't know what else they could be. Well, if, if you're not going to make a conversation and you're not going to make a public statement about it, it seems like it's personal. Th- it, that's the other thing, it, right? At least make something up. But how can something be personal if you've never even had a conversation with the guy? This guy's never even done anything. Well, like there's it. probably things that we don't know that they do know because he's, you know, courtside and he's a flashy guy and he's good friends with Beheim and who who knows. From the point, you know, first of all, like you said. But the fact that Beheim would even be friends with him, right? I don't doesn't think they're... Give him, uh, doesn't that give him a good little bit of a character boost? So what's the problem with the AD and the Chancellor? Well, I don't think they're huge fans of Beheim either. <laughs> Despite everything he's done. I mean... I know. The, the way they the handled way that... The was handled, yes, right? Yes. I yeah. mean, yeah. So, I mean, maybe it is a personal thing. I mean, you got a guy who gave 47 years of his life to, well, just coaching, uh, let alone, you know... Before that, as a player and everything else, right? And and the 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 um the the goodbye that was given to him was just like, oh, let's just throw a headline out or, or a statement on Twitter, and that yeah. was that. It's like, um, okay, it's pathetic. And yeah. I've I've never liked S S U as a school or an entity. Like they, I just don't. Don't even get me. And we're not even going to get started with what else <laughs> happened in their play. Oh, you're you're so, breaking up. What'd you say? You broke. I said we're not even going to delve into or even start with what happened there politically this past week. Oh, I missed that. So I'll send it to you. You'll see. Oh boy. Okay. It's so infuriate you. Okay. Yeah. Well, I wish I knew about it right now. Okay. No, we don't need to talk about it. This is okay. the, you know. But like I said, it's that, that, it's that, that juicy, that, huh? That. That with this is part of what's making it difficult to even want to root for this because it's like, again, you have an f- individual that t- has done what he did. Yeah, okay, look, don't like the flash. And stop bringing guys to the you know front court. But NIL, we'll talk to you. We'll, we'll work together. And you can't even do that. And it's like if you have a guy that hasn't – not even an alumni, just a fan that comes out and says that I'm going to give all this money and you say no – or you just say, eh, there better be a damn good reason. You know, maybe you say to a fan's perspective, there better be a damn good reason. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe you say to a Weitzman, you know, hey, instead of bringing like the Tom Brady's and the Jimmy Fallon's and getting Brent Axel worked up about it all, why don't you um, bring in some recruits, you know, or something like that? I mean, I don't, I guess that's legal, especially in so today's. He did that too. Yeah, he did. He did. He but did I mean, that make that more, more of a, make that more of a, a focal point instead of the celebrity thing. Like, I don't know, man. So I've heard that he doesn't give them money or anything like that. And, and by that, I mean, maybe he's splitting hairs there. Maybe he donates to uh, foundations or things like that. But I didn't, I never liked it. I kind of understand like if, if the school in general was like, Hey man, let's not make a spectacle out of this. But that like, like to my point, I mean, why ha- have a conversation with a guy about it? Don't just say, you know what? We don't want you here. We don't want your money. Um, we don't really care, you know, if we keep Jesse Edwards, we don't care if we get, you know, who we're bringing in with NIL. We don't care to be competitive in the NIL. Look, it's just, it is what it is. We're going to do what we're going to do. And, uh, we don't want you in the way of it. And now that we've got Bayheim out of the way and we've got Weitzman out of the way, we're going to do what we need to do now, which is, who knows? I don't know, but it looks, but it's a bad look. My point is, is that if they had come out with a a statement, bad look. If, if they just come out with a statement or they give you some kind of explanation or they tell you what they're going to go do, uh, going to do going forward, then there's no 
We're not sitting here having a conversation speculating about all the negative things that could be. So, well, I mean, <laughs> if there's no answer, then it's not a good one, right? Well, exactly. Exactly. And if they're not willing to talk about it, they're not willing to talk. To, I mean, obviously, we know that there's not enough. I mean, this is, this whole world lacks more conversation with people that, you know, have differing opinions to be able to come to a compromise. I mean, uh, and we're just seeing that fall apart. But at the end of the day, you can say, yeah, we're just not going to. But there's got to be a good reason. And you got to have a backup plan to make up that, especially with the fans. So I guess the only thing that's really been good about that really is just how Adrian Autry's managed this roster minus, you know, Jesse since he's been back, you know. But I'll tell you what, I would have rather taken Jesse back than getting Chance. And that's not a shot at Chance, but right. Jesse was more yeah. important. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, you know, there there's – obviously he's looking for a center still, and they've got their feelers out. There's a there's there's a couple of them out there that they're trying to grab out of the portal and and you know I guess you try to grab out of the portal this year and recruit for next year and it kind of it, you know it's going to be the game that's played and I think Adrian Autry's doing I I really do I trust his I trust his judgment and what he's doing and I think he's doing pretty damn good for for um you know he's hard on the recruiting trail he's he's they're 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 you know very active in the portal. Um, to get Westry back and and Deland Starling, I think is they're they're both pretty big. Um, I don't know what that yeah, means. Kind of telling though, too, right? As far as the culture, it may be a what they. Telling. Well, for the, well, the first thing I thought of is 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 you know obviously he's laying down a foundation that's for you know however he pitched it to them, they believe in what he's going to be doing at SU, and that's the first thing I I, I thought first of all. And well, the first thing that came to my mind, which, I mean, again, I'm not going to sit here. No one stole an idea from my head because there was an article. I don't know if it was news or if it was whatever that hit two days later. But like I said, to me, it was more telling of the fact that, like, these two guys were like, we were in their top three and they decided to go somewhere else. And immediately the next year, granted, they might not have had lived up to the expectations of the schools that they went to, but like. Immediately, Beheim's gone. Now these guys are here. So the question is: Is I mean, if Beheim was still here, would they have transferred here? Did they not come here because Beheim was still the coach? Yeah, um, it's possible. I think those those questions are going to be answered, obviously, as we move forward. And if we see the recruiting class is getting better, all the while us not being great in the NIL situation, then we'll know that you know it had been time for quite a little while. And maybe Coach sticking around as long as he did. Maybe it did hurt recruiting, you know? I mean, I think with him in his position right now, you could say, oh, we have a legend basketball head coach that's still kind of part of what's going on. I think that could help for recruiting, but I just don't know if kids are trying to trying to play for that type of coach anymore. So I know people have been speculating on whether or not Bayheim's been hurting recruiting or not, and um, I thought that was a little bit of, a, of an eye-opener when I saw that. Yeah, I mean, I could. I mean, for as apologetic as as I've been for Bayheim, I mean, I can, I can see that a little bit. No, both I mean, can be true, right? Yeah, I mean, in you know, the he thought, could deserve not the way he wants. Plus, he could be hurting recruiting all at the same time, right? Like both can be true. It doesn't mean a fan has to be happy about it. Right, and I mean, um, I you know, I think it probably crossed a lot about a lot of people's minds when when we. Um, Got especially those two guys, but um, you know they they've reached out to uh, Naheem McLeod, I think from Florida State. He was in the in the portal. I mean, seven four guy. Um, I don't really know how much he played last year, but he's got a ton of offers out of the portal. I mean, kind of like the way Joe was when Joe went in there. So, I mean, there's well, that's the problem, right? I've been kind of tracking it a little bit. Like I said, I mean. Um, you see guys come in, you come out, like, hey, like, people are talking about Hunter Dickinson and all this other stuff. If we could only give Jesse, like, three hundred fifty or 400000 like, I got newsflash for all Syracuse basketball fans. We are not going to have a center better than Jesse Edwards next year. Probably going to be a center by committee situation. Um, and really, we're struggling to, to find. I mean, everybody we've reached out to, 
very, very shortly, they end up getting signed to another school. And the problem is, is that we're looking for a starter that's going to come in and obviously be better than than Hema. But starters are going to want to get paid. You know what I mean? So anybody that's around Jesse Edwards or anything like that, as far as talent wise, they're going to want that kind of money. And we've proven that we don't have it. If we didn't have it for Jesse, I'll be damned if we turn around and now show up with six hundred at the table for somebody less. Right. You know, there's, so there's money there. Um, so, there's money there somewhere. It's just it, it's what the, I guess it comes down to what the <laughs> hell you know they may be willing to spend. I mean, I have no idea. Like I said, the whole thing's confusing no. to me. The whole thing's a head scratcher. If you're like you're, yeah, to your point, you're never if, really, if, you're never really gonna know. No, and I mean that's how SU has been our whole lives. <laughs> you never know what the hell is going on. They're not. They're they're never yeah. upfront about anything, which is just it's, the whole thing's shady. Um. So anyway, I don't know what it looks like going forward. Like I said, I got. I I, I mean I feel pretty positive about next year. Um. I just don't. Uh, I don't know what it looks like years to follow and i always had a bad feeling about the nil stuff in syracuse being able to keep up with it to begin with which is why the whole weitzman thing was a head scratcher like i could see both sides of that um but there's got to be a, i mean if you want to like syracuse should had it should have had a conversation to work with the guy and if he's willing to dig in his own pockets and come up with money it just makes no it's just, it's an absurd it's absurdly stupid it's invincibly stupid to just say, no, we don't want your millions of dollars. Um, really dumb. <laughs> so <laughs> there's got to be a good reason. I well, or it's personal, which most of the time is not um, a good reason. So yeah. anyway, well, we'll find out. There's going to be some movement here shortly. Uh, the deadline to enter into the portal is uh, May 11th. So as soon as May 11th hits. No more. Nobody else can uh, enter the transfer portal. Now you have until June twelfth to basically figure out, like Judah Mintz has till June twelfth to figure out if he wants to stay in the NBA draft or if he wants to go back to school. But as far as entering your name into and knowing the pool that we have to work with, May eleventh is the um, is the deadline. So come May eleventh, whatever's in that transfer portal, that's the only options we have, man. Yeah, and uh, I tell you, I know you're not a big fan of locked on, but. Last week, hold, 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 a, hold uh, on, hold on, hold on. I, I have, I've, I, I, to be fair, it is it is. Oh, sorry. I, it, to be fair, can I, can I try? Can I? Can, let me let me try to reconcile this with you not having to do it. Right. Okay. Go ahead. Um, I know that you don't listen to to locked on. Right. right? Um, yeah. You've never actually come out and said that you don't enjoy it, or you don't like it because it's hard to enjoy or like something that you've never listened to. So I'm sorry exactly. for speaking, Sean. Yes. Okay. Um, perfect. You just, you don't listen um, to it. And I do. And they had an interview with William Patterson, the freshman that's coming back or that's coming in this year. And I'll tell you what, I don't know what he's going to look like on the court, but he says all the right things, he says all the right things. And he even had a, a, a little uh, comment too, uh, for all the Q's fans that kind of dogged him when we signed him. Oh, Jeez, that's so rude. Yeah, well, I mean, the thing was was that we didn't have any recruits, right, for this class coming up. It makes you want to just – it's just so cringy, man. Go on. Yeah, and we flew a flyer out on a 7-2 guy, late developer, from New York, three-star. And because we had nobody else in our recruiting class, we had our fans had the audacity to go, oh, big deal. This isn't, and, By the know, way, some of those fans back on go to Syracuse. He replied back on Twitter. Good. He's about it. He's about it. He sounds to me like the, you know, fuck around and find out type dude. So we well, will definitely see. Sorry if you're going to have to edit that. But n- no, I'm just going to, it's so much easier just to click the explicit. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, you never know because if we don't get an offensive minded center, then we got three centers that, I mean, we're just kind of going to hope to coach up well enough to just play defense. Yeah, but then you, oh man, I don't know. I know. I, I don't know. know. I don't Still like time. Starling and Westry, not exactly like honed in outside shooters. They're athletic guys and everything, but you know, you're not going to, you're going to have to have some kind of inside game and they're going to have, someone's going to have to be a threat down there. Otherwise they're just going to hang all over those other two, you know? And I mean, I, I'm just going to assume right now for, for just for me that Judah's not going to come back. 
And that's how I want to look at this team until I find out. I might even get my hopes up about that. Because I don't think it looks terrible without them. Of course, it would be tremendous with them. Because you got Westry, you know, he'd be... I mean, how do you feel about him at the three spot? And So... Yeah. And I mean, because it was a struggle. I mean, it's I think, a, huh? This is my thing. My thing is, is that I think he was high, more highly rated than Justin Taylor, and he was more highly rated than Chris Bell. And we got Chris Bell after I think he went to uh, Texas Tech, I believe, or no Auburn. Yeah, Auburn. And now we have a chance to get him. And my whole thing is that I just, I don't know. I just think that it's going to just kind of. Unless uh, unless they plan on like pressing and playing just man to man, hard hard, and like playing ten eleven guys, I don't see how this doesn't shake up that whole forward room. And that's just really my opinion, you know. Is that you know if I'm if I'm Chris Bell or if I'm um, Taylor, and you go and you get Westry after that, I mean I think that shakes that whole room up because I don't think. I think there were some guys on the brink of going. And if you're talking about running a lineup of Judah JJ with Chance Westry and, and Benny Williams and then name your random center, um, doesn't sound bad to me, but I don't think it's going to make too many people on the bench happy. So, um, again, there's, there's too many unknowns. There's too much time yeah, going just, on. That's, you know, the, that's just it. Transfer portal's still open. Not going to know till the middle of June. On top of the fact that we have no idea what to expect offensively or defensively. All I know is that I'm pretty positive that I'm that we're all going to see uh, a different style of play than what we've been watching for. Depending on how old you are, it's going to be uh, It's going to be six years like. more old school, like uh, up tempo kind of run and gun type basketball. I think it's going to be a, a little bit more exciting. And um, yeah, you know, I just don't. I don't know what the defense looks like, but. You've got the athletes. It's going to have to be, man. Yeah. It has to be. These fans are not going to want to see the same old, sh you know, even if we don't make the tournament next year and we and we go out there and we oh, play and, and Autry's playing, and they're playing up-tempo, we're playing different. I think that that will excite the fans enough to not want to call for his head. But if we're watching the same old oh, two-man pick and roll on offense, figure it out, and a two-three zone to slow down the game, it's and then we work. don't win, they're gonna be calling for his damn head, man. Yeah, well, it won't take long. There's gonna be those people anyway. But anyway, oh, all right, of course. All right, that's it for basketball. We will be right back after this to talk about some football. All right, Syracuse football news, Joe. Now, look. Besides, well, we can briefly speak on the draft stuff, okay? But mm -hmm. Jacoby and Morgan and Jateus Gear going into the portal. Okay, I think Jacoby and Morgan is a, is an obvious one, right? Unfortunately. Yeah, I kind of thought that was going to happen at some point. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't know of a whole lot of movement inside the portal. Um, I'm a little bit like like I said at the beginning of the show. I'm just kind of waiting for some real football news the last time we talked about it you know we knew that garrett trader wasn't going to play in the spring game so i got yeah. i got on to the spring game a little bit late but from what i saw i really I, I, there was nothing for me to really pull out of pull out of it and and, and to analyze it was just right it was just not um with, well, without garrett trader playing i mean um lamson looked good for i don't know here and there um, you know, I guess he really they stepped both up. Had their moments, right? Yeah, I mean, and they're going to, but and I guess they both stepped up in, in, um, you know, in the spring practices and whatnot, and they were kind of they, according to reports, they looked better than they did last year, right? And so, well, Lamson was injured, but um, C Carlos Del Rio Wilson looked good, but it seems like he is more of um, the third string. And Lamson would be the second string as far as quarterbacks go, and you know I just um, I just don't know. I, the, I guess I'm asking you because you and I haven't talked about it. But what what did what can you take out of that spring game other than 
I don't know. I didn't get anything out of yeah. it. I was I was a little more confused. Like okay, some of the so. <laughs> some of the whistles were were weird. So I mean, obviously you don't want anybody okay. getting injured, right? So the whole thing was just uh, kind of weird. Was the big thing, right? So they were kind of playing thud. Um, you know, when the whistle blew, play was over type stuff. They were not. I mean, you can argue that there's been seasons taken away from us because of early being injuries. able to. You know, injuries, being able to stay healthy. Right. Uh, and I think that this is, to me, this is, this is Dino Baber's Hail Mary attempt to, you know, we just, just, just hired a nutritionist, right? So we're going to have all summer where these football players hopefully start eating better and start listening to somebody that knows what they're supposed to do to, you know, help their bodies, right? But on top of that, it's right. him maximizing his effort to not, have injury come fall or to not get injury going to be but we had a lot of linebackers that were that were out because of some injuries and some stuff from last season Garrett um, Schroeder same thing uh, so realistically the best thing that you could get out of the spring is the fact that you know that um, you know a lot of younger um, younger players and what Dino would like to say the underbelly got a lot of starter reps. Um, so hopefully we, we see that that kind of help going into summer and going into fall and all that other stuff. And um, that's really all you can really take from it is that there's players that would have, if they were there, Marlo Wax, all those other things, that they'd be getting, you know, 80% of, you know, the first team reps. Well, now somebody else has got it. So hopefully – that helps grow the the you know grow the team and grow the depth and um, also with a, you know new nutritionists hopefully it will help some of these players put on weight a little bit easier put on muscle a little bit easier get to where they need to come start out of the fall and um, I still don't think nothing I saw gave me any type of thought process that Lampson was over Del Rio Wilson or vice versa from what I read um, the starter was. Um, figured out by a coin flip before the game. And um, I, something tells me that that competition still isn't over. So um, short answer, really couldn't take away too much other than the fact that <laughs> just be happy that there wasn't big injuries. The players that sat out, you already know what they can do. And hopefully these spring reps um, helps boost some confidence and, and help some of the other players that may not be, you know, that they're going to be in a better position fall to help us. What? Um, but we weren't throwing, throwing a real game out there. Like some of these other schools do. What kind of leash is, I hate to already talk about this, but I mean, we, we made a bowl game last year. So yeah. uh, we made a bowl game and we had some coaching changes, some coordinator changes. And uh, I mean, yeah, I don't, you know, I think honestly, um, I think a bowl game buys you another year, um, and that's just. You know, I think that he's learning as we go about different things that we need to do, different things we need to add, philosophy stuff like that. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I've, there's been years where I mean, you gotta look at last year. We started six and zero, and we were on Clemson. You know what? At Clemson, and then. Just it got to a point where the injuries were too much. Maybe Garrett, his his. It's been the past couple of years, story. though. It's been elbow. It's, it's, right. But that's the thing is that's what we have to overcome. We don't have that type of depth, and that's the type of stuff we over, we have to overcome. Which is why I think you saw the spring game the way that it was. Um, but as far as if I had a thought process or if I had to make it for me, the a bowl game gets you another year. So. Um, I think there might be rumblings. If we go zero and twelve, then yeah. But if it's just an, if it's right around where it had been five and seven, seven and five, six and six, he's not going to get fired. Okay, I mean, That's just where uh, I'm I, I I just don't know. I honestly just don't know what the what the year is going to look like. And you know, the reporting the past couple years out of camp has been. It's not the reporter's fault, but it's just been the access hasn't been there, right? And so you don't get a lot of reports. And what they do see, they report on, but it's still, you know, it's vague. And the, you know, you hope to get to the spring yeah. game to be able to tell something and you just really couldn't. So I don't know. It It's fine. Me personally, not, I, it's whatever to me. I just, 
when I look at who left, who came back, all the other things, who we brought in, to me, obviously staying healthy is going to be number one, but also it's how that offensive line um, progresses. To me, we should be comparable in every other position, in every position that we um, that we had last year, except for uh, offensive line, and that's really my biggest thing. And, and in this spring game, they really, I mean, Chris Bleich was out, and uh, they didn't really with thud and everything. They, they can't prove that to you in the spring game. So, um, to me, that's the biggest question mark: offensive line. Yeah, well, right. It's like. Last year, the year before that, so. Um, but but so, again, last we lost a lot of guys that started last year. I know, I know. So, um, all right. Well, let's. You know, you've got um, Bergeron going in the second round to offensive lineman. The Cardinals, right? No, nope. Falcons, 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 and then I'm sorry, and then um, Garrett Williams went to the Cardinals. Round three. Yeah. yeah. And then um, that was pretty much the highlights, right? And then, <laughs> and then Sean Tucker goes undrafted and gets picked up by the Buccaneers, right? Uh, Michael Jones goes undrafted, gets picked up as a free agent by the Chargers. And then Andre Schmidt, uh, also undrafted, gets picked up by the Bears. And I think all three of those teams, and I hate the Chargers, obviously, but all three of those teams have gems. Those are all very talented undrafted yeah. players, and agreed. And um, I think all three of those teams are, have, have got a, have got some seriously talented players. All three of them are awesome, in my opinion. Yeah. So, and it, it's it's going to be interesting to see. Uh, I haven't really delved down deep into like you know the contracts and everything, but depending on how much the team wants you, I mean, they'll, they'll give you money. Um, that money can be part of this contract. The guarantee of the practice squad can be part of this contract. I mean, there's certain things. Um, so I hadn't really looked in to see how much or how badly these teams wanted them. Obviously not bad enough to draft them, but to your point, I can see each three of those players making the roster. Yeah, absolutely. I and was a little surprised. The other- I'm sorry. I was surprised by Michael Jones a little bit. Were um, you? A See, little most bit. people are going to be re- surprised by Sean Tucker. Most people. I wasn't Sean surprised Tucker. by Sean Tucker because I just, like I said, when he was when he decided to go pro, I was like, you know, I wish him luck. I just felt like one more year would have been tremendous for him to come yeah, back. See, I year. think the the problem was is he didn't do anything. There was some type of injury. Right. They were high. Yeah. Remember when yeah, during the yeah. season when he would like. He'd run the ball, and it would look seemingly like there was nothing going on. And then he would like run to the sideline, and he'd be out for a little while. Yeah. And then he'd come back in to be like, "What is going on?" Like, mm-hmm. there was something going on. They were hiding an injury, and they had to take care of it because he got invited to the combine and didn't do anything except mm-hmm. for interviews. And then we had the Syracuse pro day. He didn't do anything, and it's because he wasn't medically cleared. And then three days before the pro day. Or three days cleared. before the draft, he had his own little mini pro day, and I think he did like three things. He didn't run the forty. He did so. Sean Tucker didn't do anything, or wasn't able, or allowed to do anything during this whole process to show teams what he actually has. So realistically, to me, like if he wouldn't have been injured and he would have been able to do those things, then I think that he would have been drafted. So I think that there's a lot of teams that are in the dark about the injury, or you know maybe they didn't like what's going on. Um, but it'll be interesting to see. I think he's he's going to have, I mean, Tampa Bay's tough. Running backs is tough overall. I mean, you, there's a lot of running backs that didn't get drafted. I mean, Israel Abanaconda, you know, the beast from freaking Pittsburgh last year. I don't think he got drafted until like the fourth or fifth round this year. Um, remember uh, when we were playing Minnesota? Ibrahim? Yeah, Ibrahim, yeah. Yeah, beast. Didn't get drafted. So running backs is difficult because – so many teams use multiple running backs and they only really need specific types of running. They, they want to grab different types of running backs. So they want the receiver type and then they want, okay, well we do the zone blocking. So we got to get a zone guy. So they're looking for specific guys to fill their needs. Can they play special teams? All those things. So um, running back is really, really tough. Uh, but I think that most people are going to be more surprised about Sean Tucker, but Cal Jones to me, he goes to the chargers 
dominates on special teams, he's gonna. I, I feel like he's gonna mirror what Zaire Franklin's done in his career. Okay, fair enough. One more thing. <clears throat> the other day, before day two, was it yesterday morning? No, I think it was yesterday morning actually. Before day three, I was watching Good Morning Football, right? And they were having some different, you know, guys on and different guests and stuff. And do you know who they had on to sit there and talk to and try to pump up and get, you know, drafted and give them a little bit of a slot? I look up and it's Tommy DeVito. What? And I'm like, yeah, Tommy DeVito. And at the end of the draft, he was the second. He was number two on the available quarterback list. So it's just crazy to me how because I was like, why is Tommy DeVito on the NFL Network? And why are these guys talking about how he should be getting drafted? Because I thought of him the way that like when he left Syracuse, did you think in your wildest imaginations that he was going to get drafted? No, no. And he didn't. He didn't. But he was close. And today I wake up and well, 15 hours ago, ex Syracuse Tom DeVito will return to the East Coast after signing as an undrafted free agent with the New York Giants. Oh, look at you. <laughs> so stupid. He just wants to be back <laughs> home. He wants to be back home play, playing for your New York team in New Jersey. I can't get away from him. I can't get away from him. That's kind of funny. I'll be in, I'll yeah. be in, uh, in Jersey this summer at MetLife Stadium for Metallica. Just thought I'd add nice. that in there. Yeah. It's my son's birthday <laughs> present. Um, there was something awesome. else I was going to add, too. Uh, and I forgot. I think I forgot what it was. The hell was it? Damn it. Uh, maybe I'll think of it here. Well, let's talk real quick um, some lacrosse. And look, they had to win yesterday. And it was a struggle. Uh, they was, had a real tough time with face-offs when they were down. And a couple different times, they really put the pedal to the metal. I mean, there was a couple, two different times where they scored three goals in a row, I think. And um, they, yeah. they, looked, they looked a couple times like they were down by six at one point. I think they lost 17 to 15, right? Something like that. Uh, but, um, but they looked really 18, good. 15. 18-15, okay. Well, they were down by six at one point, man. They cut it to two. Got real close um, on a, on a man-up opportunity, that which they're like one of the best in the country um, in the power play stuff, and they weren't able to, to get that to one. And I think it was an opportunity where it didn't matter if they scored. It was going to be one minute regardless of how long. Um, you know, it's one minute. No, no leaving early from a goal, uh, from a goal being scored, and that was that was with like a little bit over, you know, maybe just under two minutes left to play, and they kind of blew that opportunity. But look, what a freaking talented team this is going to be. Not for anything going in, and the women are absolutely killing it. But going into next year, um, I think that these freshmen, Spolina and, and a couple of the other guys there, they, I mean, this team's going to be good next year, and I think. Um, when all is said and done, this year's um, was kind of a gimme. They 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 went one and four, right? One and five in the ACC. So uh, the ACC yeah. has just been has just in the past eight to ten years has come on as just a powerhouse in lacrosse. I mean, you know, you've got Duke, but they were ranked second. You got Notre Dame, they were ranked first at one time. Uh, UVA was f- is f- in the top five. I mean, they're just they're they're a powerhouse in lacrosse, man. And uh, Syracuse being as young as they are, I think you know has opportunity next year to really capitalize on on the talent that they got. But it was a good year. It was fun to watch. There was some there was some some moments there, you know, um, that the Princeton game kept them alive a little bit, and they got back up into the into the top 15 as far as rankings go so anyway it was fun to watch it's just disappointing again um to have a team uh that you're so used to seeing in the tournament just not make it again but you know yeah well like you said i think that they were fun to watch you saw the talent but you know 
every time that somebody did something right and you're watching the game it's like oh freshman sophomore fr- yeah. freshman and it's like you're just super young and like you said you know the, the the likes of virginia and duke and and uh notre, notre dame. dame i mean just i mean north, north carolina's north carolina yeah you're talking about oh, oh those the, three are the top three schools that was the game that was the game as the princeton game and the unc game uh they had to have the UNC game. That was the game I was thinking of that put them back up into the top 15 and gave them an opportunity um, after, even after See, the yeah. loss to Virginia. So, to me, if they beat Duke last year or yeah, yesterday, they beat, then they're in. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's just really where I was. It, yeah, I think so. So they needed to win one of the last two and they didn't. And it was against, you know, two of the top three schools. So. That's understandable. You see where they're coming from. You know they got a good, they got a top. I think they're tenth. The recruiting class next year is tenth, and they're bringing in. Uh, I think the number ten faceoff guy, John uh, John Mullen, a four star, because um, that's really where I don't know if that's what you see, but yeah, I mean, obviously you're going to you're going to see some sloppiness, right? I watched yeah. the Virginia game last week. There were so many unforced errors and just, I mean, turnovers that made you want to, if I had hair, pull my hair out, and. It was like that's basic, just passing, right? But I guess that happens with with younger players. Um, but we get killed with faceoffs and getting into those, just those, like you said, the streaks. We can catch up, we can get some momentum. And the next thing you know, the team we're playing against scores a goal, gets faceoffs, scores a goal, gets faceoffs, scores a goal. It gets, happen, like it's, it's everything happens so quick when you can win faceoffs, like you know, over, one after another, over, another. Yeah. And over again. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So I mean, obviously we need to fix that. Hopefully this guy will be will be part of that next year. Um, and obviously we got some more Spolinas coming in next year. He's got two brothers coming in, um, and they're a young team. It'll be one year, you know, more experience. So I'm excited about it. They gave me hope, you know, versus last year's team. Definitely more fun to watch, and you know, watching these young guys. Uh, just unfortunate we couldn't couldn't get enough done to. Uh, to get in that tournament. But like you said, when you're in the ACC, five of our, what, six or seven losses came from the ACC, right? So five. What are you supposed to do when you're playing against top five teams and those are just your only losses? So it's tough. Oh, that's, t- I mean, that's what I'm saying. One and five in the ACC, the one win was the UNC game and they had to have that one. They weren't, they weren't favored in that game going into it. We had been beat by UNC already. So, and they don't get a tournament. So very tough schedule, and it's hard to say that you know it's, it's hard to say I'm going to put an eight and seven team in the tournament. Isn't that what their record was? Eight and seven. Yeah, eight and seven overall. That's tough. Yeah. Even though they, all their losses are from ranked teams, it's it's tough. Yeah, and uh, it's just a blast to watch. And the more you know, I watch my son play, the more I just watch lacrosse in general, college lacrosse in general. It's great. Watch a lot of co- yeah. um, high school games too locally. My son likes to get there early um, and see what games can be played before before his. And the way that they have everything, you know, with um, Max Preps and everything, that website and all of the the the, the yeah. I think the stats are there. I mean, things have changed like tr- tremendously since we were in high school. You know, I mean, you've got mm-hmm. you can see everything. You see what everybody's doing. You can see, you know, you get the you get the some of the stats and things like that. And um, oh yeah, it's just it's a lot of fun. It's a fun sport to watch. It's a fast paced sport. Most most of it's pretty fast paced, which is great. Is. So it absolutely is. And I think that um I think that uh honestly um. It's a situation where, to me, like we're going to easily be the best team that didn't make the tournament. Yeah, I think so. And like I said, you know, you know, they got, they had some rough growing pain. They had some growing pains this year, but coming into next year, they're going to be Syracuse is going to be a force to be reckoned with next year. And um, I can't, I can't wait to be honest with you for that. I, re- I really can't. I think it's uh, awesome. I love Gary Gate as coach, and. I love the squad, and like you mentioned, the guys coming in, and um, that's exciting. I mean, uh oh, oh boy, what yeah, happened? no, it's definitely exciting. It's it's they're going to be good. It just stinks because so is everybody else. You know, I looked at <laughs> I looked at the recruiting class for Duke, and like they got like four to top ten recruits in the class coming in next year for them. So, is that what you're uh owing about? No, my uh oh actually was breaking news. 
What? Sources say Syracuse quarterback Justin Lampson intends to enter the NCAA transfer portal. <laughs> so I guess Carlos Del Rio Wilson. Oh, oh my Adam. gosh. You know what? I'm turning football off until September. I, I, I'll tell you what. Was, this was 30 minutes ago. All right. Well, I'm so. just gonna go to. I'm gonna go to sleep on football. And when I wake up, it'll be going, and I'll then I'll then I'll catch up. That's how I feel about it. I'll catch up in September. I got you. I, I, I got you. Yeah. I'm I'm done. I'm done. I'm um officially now. So uh, anyway, um. All right. I guess that's it, man. Sorry for the delay with uh. With with getting shows done and stuff, man. But it's been brutal. Everything's been brutal, oh, and yeah. um, we were gonna do one a couple weeks ago, but I went tuna fishing, which was great. I've never been before. It's a lot of fun. Six mm-hmm. of us caught fifteen tuna. Wait, I don't even need it. I'll catch it, clean it, and cook it. Actually, I paid for someone nice. to clean it, but anyway, um, it's fun. Thanks for asking. All right. That is going to do it for us today. Uh, We will be back as needed, hopefully sooner than later. We appreciate all of you for listening so much. For Joe, I'm Sean. We're out. Peace.